With his message titled, It's What We Know, The Knowledge to Nourish Our World, give it up, get loud, and put your hands together for Managing Director at Cargill Premix and Nutrition, Sri Kantam Naini. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you here today. Raise your hand if you know who this is. If I would have asked this question in 1989, almost the entire room would have raised their hand. This is Bo Jackson, one of the most talented athletes of our time. At Auburn University, he rushed 4,300 yards, scored 43 touchdowns, and was a Heisman Trophy recipient. And he ran track, and he played baseball. And upon graduation, he had an opportunity to play pro football and pro baseball, and he chose pro baseball. But a year in, on the off season, he said, you know what, I want to play pro football as well. In 1989, Nike launched the Bo Knows campaign. And the premise was that Bo Knows had to do everything. Bo Knows baseball, Bo Knows football, Bo Knows racing. But did you know that Bo Knows farming? That's right. He was an FFA member in McDury, Alabama. Any folks from Alabama in here today? All right. So somewhere in the room could be the next two or three sport pro athlete, or the next president of the United States, or a Grammy award winning artist who needs no introduction, or a farmer whose knowledge and, and hard work strengthens her community and nourishes the world. Jimmy Carter, Bo Jackson, Taylor Swift, and the countless FFA members around the United States show us that it's what we know that sets us apart. And that's why an agricultural education is so important. And you see, knowledge has always been a part of farming and agriculture, right? Knowing the weather, knowing the markets, uh, knowing how to face all those risks that, uh, that your farm faces every day. And like the land that you live and farm on, that knowledge is passed on from generation to generation. Your teachers, your mentors, your families, they've given you that knowledge, and you've worked hard to earn it. True to the FFA motto, you are learning to do more every day. And I, too, learned about farming at a young age. I was born in India and remember walking through uh, sugarcane fields uh, with, my, with my grandfather. And at five years old, we, we moved to Iowa. Any folks from Iowa in the room? <laughs> All right. Give my fellow Hawkeyes and Cyclones a round of applause there. Um, so we, thank you. Uh, we, uh, we moved to Iowa so that my father could get uh, medical treatment that he needed. And while Iowa was a long ways from Andhra Pradesh, India, where I, where I was born, um, I quickly realized that harvesting sugar cane isn't all that different than detasseling corn, right? Um, and now today at Cargill, I, I have the opportunity and the privilege uh, to lead a technology team, uh, thinking about how technology can, can disrupt and transform agriculture, because uh, ultimately we need to nourish the world in a safe, responsible, and sustainable way. There are 570 million farms around the world. And two million of those are, are right here in the United States. And each of them requires knowledge and, and hard work to operate. But ultimately, we need to think about how uh, we make farms more productive, more sustainable, and more, more profitable. And the productivity and, and sustainability of farming has, has really never been more important. Some of you may know that uh, by 2050, there will, be nearly, uh, there will be nearly 10 billion people on this planet. And so what does that mean? Well, it means we're going to need 70% more food to feed that population. We'll need roughly 70% uh, more protein to, to get you know, all of those mouths fed. And the reality is, to produce that food and to get it from where it's produced to, to where it's needed, and to do that all within our planetary boundaries, well, that's, that's going to take some work. What we also know, though, is that transformational uh, technologies and disruptive technologies are going to be critical to making this happen. 
but a recent uh, McKinsey study tells us that agriculture has some catching up to do. It's one of the least digitized industries of, of our time. As a matter of fact, it's dead last. Um, and so, so there's a lot of work that has, to, that has to happen here. But it also tells me this. Uh, as I look around into, into the audience and I see all of these young people, you happen to be the most digitally savvy generation of our time. Um, so you're gonna play a really critical role. I also know that in order for us to get more productive and more profitable and, and ultimately more sustainable, well, it's gonna take technology and real work. Because you see, the more productive we are, that, that's how we're gonna feed that growing population. And the more profitable we are, that's how we're gonna help sustain a, a, a rural way of life that we, that we all cherish. And the more sustainable we are, well, that in part is how we'll solve climate change for, for our generation. So if you ask me, that's some really cool and exciting reasons to come to work every day. So let me tell you a little bit about how Cargill is, is playing a part. Some of you in this room may know that uh, the, the dairy industry ha has gone through uh, some tough times, but um, if you think about dairy cows, th they're each unique. Um, and the farmers who have, have dairy cows in this room may even tell you they've got their own unique uh, personalities, right? Um, but if you can go beyond the herd and start to understand what's happening at each individual animal, well, that can start to have a, a really neat impact. Um, that's why recently uh, we invested in uh, a technology and partnered with a company um, called Cainfist in, in Ireland. And they're using non-invasive cameras, uh, so you can kind of think of it like facial recognition for, for cows. Um, using that technology, they can, they can ultimately know when a cow is eating, when she's drinking, um, whether she's in any pain or, or discomfort. Um, and, and then they take all that information and they use it to understand uh, feed and water intake, the health and comfort of the animal, and ultimately that yields uh, more, more productivity um, and more component productivity as well. So uh, it's, it's really having an impact. Well, let, oh. As first light Let's take a look at this video and, I awaken. and I'll tell you more about it. I am connected to this land and everything that surrounds me, driven by the knowledge passed down from generation to generation. It gives me strength to face anything tomorrow could throw at me. But I know time stands still for no man. Things change, industries evolve, and information will be the key to a fast-moving, revolutionary future. So what if I could extend my knowledge and open the door to great new possibilities? What if I could create the perfect farm, one that could learn from itself, where everything would run at its best, guided by my vision and counseled by the most precise advice? where I could control and connect every element, where each and every animal would be monitored and taken care of for its own welfare and better returns. I know there will always be elements I can't anticipate, but I'm in control of all challenges ahead. Like the generations before me benefited from the knowledge of others, I'm connected to something bigger a network of ever-growing knowledge, enabling me to make the best farming decisions. Always. I will make sure my animals live under the best conditions. I will make sure my farm runs optimally and produces at its full potential. I'll put everything I can into building a heritage for the future. I envision being connected to everything I've built for generations to come. I envision a sustainable cycle that brings value to animals and man. I envision creating the farm of the future. I am.
you think? Kind of felt like a trailer to a new sci-fi movie, didn't it? Well, that's uh, a little bit about our dairy intelligent uh, platform where we're using all this data coming off the farm, collecting it, and, and providing uh, neat insights for, for producers on their tablets or smartphones. So dairy intelligent and campus and the many other technologies that, that we're developing are ultimately helping, helping uh, milk production and, and the economics of the dairy industry. But let's think about all those cool things that we're doing on land um, and take it underwater. The reality is almost 3.1 billion folks uh, get 20% of their protein from seafood. And so our world's ocean ecosystems need just as much investment and, and work as, as what we're doing on land. Um, as a matter of fact, 90% of wild uh, fish caught are, are either at capacity or, or overfished. And because fish uh, require amino acids to, to grow and develop, and they sometimes eat other smaller fish to get those amino acids, it's really putting a lot of stress um, on, on our world's oceans. And so we need to make similar investments and developments in, in, uh, in aquaculture as well. Let me tell you a little bit about shrimp. Did you know that shrimp make a noise when they eat? <laughs> That's right. And if you listen to them and, and can turn that sound into to insights, well, you can, again, start to impact the efficiency of, of shrimp production. That's why we recently uh, invested in a technology called IQ Shrimp. Um, you can learn more about it at, at our booth. But effectively, we're taking all of this information coming off of the farm, uh, water temperature, feeding patterns, uh, the quality of, of uh, the water itself, and we bring it into a live operations dashboard, and that ultimately tells us how we can improve feed, but also we can start to predict what the optimal feeding times are um, and what the optimal harvest times are, and that's already creating real impact across uh, Ecuador, Mexico, and the many countries that we're, that we're operating in. So whether you're a shrimp farmer, uh, a dairy producer in Wisconsin, an Iowa farmer who's, who's harvesting corn or, or harvesting sugarcane, it's what you know and the technologies that you apply to it that ultimately are going to change our world for the better. We've also recently launched uh, Feeding Intelligence, where you can learn more about these technologies um, and the many other investments that Cargill is making. Well, so sitting here today, what is it that you know? Well, you're here at this convention because you know the value uh, that farming can have on our lives. And, and you know that the disruptive and rapid changes in technology is having a significant impact on, on modern farming. You also know that if we can address these problems and solve these challenges, well, that's how we're going to impact some of the most urgent and pressing needs of our, of our time. But before I go, uh, let me tell you what but I know. I know that you care. I know that you're incredibly smart. I know you want to make a difference. And I know that you all have the passion and the knowledge um, to be able to make a significant impact on, on our world. So let's live out your FFA values, learning to do, doing to learn, earning to live, and living to serve. If you do, I know that the world will be a better place and agriculture is how we'll get it done. Thank you. So we'll open it up uh, to, uh, to you all for any questions that you have. I've got a few minutes here that I can answer any questions about some of, of the tech that I've talked about. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead. What facial features does it use to analyze the cow's face? Yeah, um, I'll repeat the question. So uh, from Wisconsin, um, and you wanted to know essentially how uh, the, the computer vision technology is working. How is it recognizing uh, an individual cow 
ultimately no different than how your iPhone recognizes that you're you, right, and un unlocks the phone. We're essentially applying similar um, technology to, to a cow. So there's uniquenesses about every single cow and, and we're able to convert that into knowing that that cow is, is you know, Betty versus Sue. Uh, James Aldrich from the Fergus of Lewistown chapter in Lewistown, Montana. Um, do you think with the rise in, uh, I would say like a backlash against uh, dairy and um, like livestock farmers, do you think that the dairy and livestock industry will be able to continue to thrive, especially with the need of food in um, the next 20 to 30 years? Yeah, that's, that's a great question and, and very insightful on your part. Um, you know, I think as, as I shared, to me what's really, really important is recognizing that, that our populations are growing and we need to fundamentally create and, and produce more food than we do today. Um, match that with changing preferences, right? So, so consumers are, are, are evolving and their preferences for food are evolving as well. And when those two things come together, it, in my mind, it, it helps everyone thrive, right? Because some people really like milk, some people really like chicken, some people really like shrimp, but I think we're gonna have to produce all of it, right? Um, and we're gonna have to do all of it more effectively uh, to, be, to be successful. Good question. Hi, I'm Trent Terra from the Salford FA chapter in Louisiana. I wanted to know about the facial recognition. How it's, you said it's non-invasive. Where would it be, like on feeding stands and water boots? Right, yeah, great question. Um, so the, the technology is installed on the barn and, and it high up. Um, so the idea is that, that the cows shouldn't even know that the technology is there. Um, and, and actually the producers won't know that the technology is there as well. So the idea is that um, it, it requires very little maintenance, uh, but, but it's doing exactly what you suggested, which is starting to understand feeding patterns, you know, when there's, uh, when there's not feed in front of the bunk, um, when there's water missing in, you know, in the water trough, that kind of thing. Um, so the idea is today, uh, you know, you're walking the, the barn and you're checking for these things. The idea is that by applying this technology, um, the, the labor on farm is, is more uh, efficient and effective. Yep, you bet. We've got one back here. I'm Garland Weaver from the National Trail MVCTC chapter in New Paris, Ohio. And my question is with that shrimp IQ software you mentioned, how do you keep your system from mistaking a different sound from the sound the shrimp make when they eat? Yeah, so that's a really good question. Um, so we're still really early days in, in this particular technology, um, so it's still being researched. But like, like with computer vision, um, most of the technology that's applied in agriculture, because of where we're at in this journey, um, it's not unique or new to agriculture. Um, so in this particular case, the technology that, that um, we're leveraging actually comes from um, the tuna industry. Um, so uh, there, there are buoys out in the ocean that listen to, uh, that listen underwater and help us um, identify where, where tuna fish are, are pooling. Um, and it just so happens that, that um, sonar technology, which is what this particular technology is, was developed you know, 50, 60 years ago. Um, and, and we're really just looking at the advancements in that technology as we apply it to, to shrimp. Um, but like everything, it takes time. So the data models are, are evolving. Um, and, and if we have a particular error rate today in the future, we know it's going to improve dramatically. Thanks for the question. Any other questions? Uh, hello, um, I'm Drake Washington from the Crowley High FFA from Louisiana chapter. And my question is, AI continues to get smarter each and every day. So with how far behind we are in AI, do you, are you ever scared that we'll fall too far behind when it comes to AI, like your shrimp AI or technolo technological cameras? Yeah, um, 
you know, I think that, I think we have two benefits as as an industry, right? One, um, we get the opportunity because of where um, ag tech is to leverage technology that other fields are using. So for me, that's promising because we're not kind of paving the way. We're we're following in, in uh, to some extent. The second thing is, I, I think, just looking out in this room and, and looking at all of you, right? You are are using technology every single day, and it's a, just a part of the fabric of your life. So you imagine 10 years from today how all of you coming into the workforce or, or you know, at the companies or on your farms or wherever you're at, you're, you're going to be thinking about solving problems more um, through the use of technology or more creatively than, than the current generation. So for me, that's the promise, right? That yes, these technologies are gonna evolve, but all of you are also going to be entering into um, you know, developing and maturing these pro uh, products. So for me, that's, that's something to get really excited about. All right, any other questions? Oh, we've got one back here. I'm Carson Huber from uh, VIT FFA in Illinois. And my question is, at what point do you think technology would go too far and that the need for human hands would be replaced by the hands of robots or technology? Do you think there'll ever still be a need for humans to farm? Yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think in, in every other industry that we've seen technology being applied, right, it helps assist in, in the work and activity. Um, not replace. And so um, will, will some activities go away because technology can do them? Yes, but I don't think the, the need to interact with your animals or the need to interact with the land that you farm on goes away entirely. And so I think we need to think about how we leverage technology to help us be more efficient versus being fearful of technology replacing what it is that we do, if that makes sense. All right, last question over here. Sure. My name is Jake Orthouse. I'm from the Forsake chapter in Forsake, Minnesota. And my question is, with all this technology and AI, what does it cost the farmer to implement such technologies? Yeah, great question. Um, so the technology is, is evolving very rapidly, right? So what we do when we build the early prototypes is we get a target price and then we're working to get to uh, a, a cost of ex uh, effective price that everybody could, could leverage the technology. So in the case of Canthus, um, you know, we're, we're anywhere between 50 and $65 a cow per year, but our hope is to, to have that cost within 18 months time. So it's no different than the first iPod or the first iPhone that you purchased, right? And, and now not only does the phone do more, but it costs less. Um, I'd liken it to, to that in that the technology is at a particular price point today, but it's quickly dropping as technology evolves. Thank you, everyone. It was a pleasure to be with you here today. Sri, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us today. Um, as a gift, we have a handmade cutting board, which was actually made by one of our very own FFA members, uh, a young man by the name of Coy Kroll from the Mount Carmel FFA chapter in Illinois, and we're excited to gift it to you today. Give it up one final time for our friend Sri. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Appreciate it.